Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Jordan. Every day, the first person there before the sun would be Jordan. And he was there because he wasn't good. He would work with a batting instructor and work all day long and be the last person to leave every night also. I asked him what it was like for him in the morning. And Jordan said, I get up before the sun comes up and I make myself some breakfast by myself. He was down there alone. And I get in the car and I'm driving to spring training and there's no one really out on the roads yet. And I look at the seat next to me and I see my dad. And I talk to him. I think to myself, Pops, we're doing this. We're doing this together. And the day would end, and he would say to the batting instructor, can we do a little more? I think I'm getting this. I think I'm learning this. I think I'm getting this. And that's when Sports Illustrated put him on the cover, saying that Michael Jordan has embarrassed baseball. And as I would watch him there every night as the sun was going down and the other ball players had left, and I would see this guy working to get better, Michael Jordan working to get better. I couldn't help thinking that if you ever have children, you ought to pray that they grow up someday to embarrass you like this. What it did teach me was don't be afraid to try. The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't, it doesn't pan out the way that you envision it. But at least you know that by giving it a shot. You never succeed without that possibility of failure. I mean, each time that I, you know, I do something, it's, I, can, I can either win or I can lose. You know? And you know, it's that inner confidence that you got to have to take that chance. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. Everything that I've done in my life, I've taken a chance in either succeeding at it or failing at it. But I've taken that chance and I will not let the opportunity of failure stop me from doing something that I truly, truly enjoy doing. Jones to Jordan, left at the top of the key, shoots from there, he scores! Jordan scores! Jordan scores! The Wizards win 93-92! You've had a lot of fantastic moments in sports. What's the greatest moment? I mean, what started everything? You don't say know. that. <laughs> don't say. Don't say the shot against you. Yeah, that was the greatest moment because I think that took me from a. If I had any doubts about playing on college level or playing with the big guys, you know, that shot gave me the confidence that I belonged where I was. You know, and that it was, you know, if you put your mind to doing whatever you want to do, you know, good things can happen. You know, so before anything else happened with Michael Jordan outside of that that game and you know, against you guys. That shot gave me the idea that I could be better than what people think and I can, you know, surpass any expectations that I may have for myself. Let me turn it. What's your greatest disappointment in sports? I haven't had any disappointments. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is, is a tool that teaches, you know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. 
I've looked at every experience that I've had, negative and positive, and, and taken that as a positive. You know, if I wouldn't change anything because I think it would alter some of the other things that happened. You know, so when I look back, I can't say that I've had any bad things happen. Sure, I mean, you don't want bad things to happen, but you deal with bad things. You can't have good or you know, without bad. Who's your favorite guy to play against? Myself. If I can really elaborate on why I said myself more so than Absolutely. another athlete, is that because a lot of times I had to battle with myself to keep challenging myself. You know, that to me was why I would say the you know, biggest battle was it was myself. Because when you get to a certain pinnacle, you got to find some ways to keep going out there for 82 games. My competitive drive is. is far greater than anyone else that I've met. You know, I think that I thrive on that. I think that's my biggest motivation in life, you know, is to 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 compete, you know, find different competitions and certain things in life and, and, and try to overcome that, you know, be it positive or negative. But uh, I have yet to meet someone who is as competitive as me, you know, and I just feel that much confident about my competitive drive. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I think what made him so special as a marketing icon is that he was natural. Today, when everyone really tries to be like Mike, they're trying so hard to invent a persona. I think that people see through that and it doesn't stand the test of time. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. He runs his corporate empire from high atop Chicago, the city that made him famous. Could, could you have imagined when, when you first started playing that one day you'd be sitting up here running a company that's worth a half a billion dollars? No. It, it never really, I never really thought about it. All I thought about was doing what I was good at and letting that open up a lot of opportunities for me and choosing from that point on. Michael. Which were you more proud of, your athletic skills or the mental skills that you brought to the game, and which was uh, more difficult to keep up? The mental skills uh, came with the education of the game, you know, that either I learned from Coach Smith before I got here or I learned in the course of the uh, coaching staff that, that I've been endured with. The mental part is hard because you have to really learn taking everything that you've learned over a period of time and, and apply that to your game and tie that into the physical aspect to your game and make the complete basketball player that you try to become. You know, so uh, physically it's, it's a little bit easier, but the mental part is, is the hardest part and I think that's the part that separates the good players from the great players. There's a lot of conversations about uh, what your game is capable of, of achieving. And I'm a firm believer that if, if you have a good game, your game is going to say that. You, know, you don't have to say it. So I guess it's trying to play down some of the trash talking, you know, animosity that's between in words and, uh, and the whole promotional thing. Let your game be your promotion, your marketing tool. Uh, and that was our whole era, you know. Our game gave the labels of what I... Uh, our basketball skills were, and then the marketing came back around that. Now it's changed, you know. So I, I'm trying to revert back to where your game do all your talking instead of what we may say and what someone else may say about your game. As you leave the game, what message do you want to leave to young athletes that are coming on? Be true to the game, because the game will be true to you. If you try to shortcut the game, then the game's going to shortcut you. If you put forth the effort, you know, good things will be bestowed upon you. You know, that's truly about the game. And in some ways, that's about life, too. One day, you might look up and see me playing the game at 50. <laughs> oh, don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> never say never. Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look forward to it.